What's up, my folks? Well, Dixie had them. We got nine of them. I know you boys would be happy over there on them farms. She busted her damn nose. I don't know how she did that. Done that having puppies. It's crazy. Hurt herself. <laughs> I probably pushed her head up into the side of the bumper rail or something. What's up? But, yep, there they are. We know what these are. I had to go look and check something real quick, make sure I was correct. Uh, yeah, when you know these dogs, this is a proven recipe for us. We've done this. Uh, this will be the fifth litter off these. She's got some out that are four, three and a half. I did her two times. Three times in a row, back all with Rusty. I mean, this bitch will probably never be bred or nothing else. And then I gave her a break, and I hit her again, and then uh, and then this her her last one. This, when I when I got this bitch and I hunted with this bitch a few times, I realized how good she was. That I wanted to make a brood bitch out of her. Sometimes you gotta take dogs that you know have a certain charisma, say, and uh, use that. <laughs> You know, and they, I lucked out with that litter and got a bunch of good, high-quality dogs that I could base a line on. Now, these dogs here, we have figured them out. You know, once you have a, I'd say 90% of these dogs that have went out, and maybe even more, see, yeah, there's only been about two or three that went out as pets off the, all of the dogs off of it all went to good hunters. And uh, we figured them out. You got the base on these dogs is you got to start them when they're mature and they're on. Um, they'll let you know. It's the same thing as that bitch that likes the board out there. And I'm, I show the little Brindle female. Yeah, uh, she's uh, and you know the, the one that I I had to sell this year. Um, all those dogs, you know, we figured them out. You know, you got to wait until they let you know. You can't rush them. And then no matter how good they act when they're young, you never start them young. We figured that out on to them. You'll get a much better dog if you just wait a few more months, mature them out. You end up with a much better end product. And they're as good as uh, as anything I've seen so far. You know, we've gotten some, a good high average. You know, that the good ones are, are, there's a high percentage of good ones. And uh, a nice chance of getting a great, a real great dog out of them. So that's great, you know. That we that's one good thing about selling, you know, working working catch dogs is you got customers that give you feedback and come back and keep buying the, to work them, you know what I mean? Um what you know, I'm going to explain what I think that people don't understand what it is to breed the perfect catch dog, okay? A it's a, it's kind of you kind of have a to do it a little bit different than like the old way. A, a good catch dog has to have he's got to have intelligence for one, highly intelligent animal. You want to have a dog that has a good hard mouth, what we call mouth, a hard bite. He needs to have a good hard bite, um, and he needs to be very tenacious and um, rough. You know, he needs to be a rough dog, and he has to have good endurance and. Uh, we call them wind, you know, that's the word a lot of the, the breeders use is he, the dog's breeding for wind. Um, and <clears throat> he has to be a game animal. He has to be able to stay. Plus, they have to have a durability to them. They have to be, um, they have to be able to handle bad times. Like, they're, we, we were all talking about dogs, like certain dogs, you know, we've seen, um, like when they get hurt, they have to be not going to shock and freak out. You know what I mean? They have to have that ability. Um, you know, they have to. Have, it's it's a. You got to breed the perfect dog. He has to be highly game. He has to have a hard bite. He has to have good endurance, high intelligence. You know, the I think intelligence is a lot overlooked a lot. You know, um, they're not. You know, usually your best catch dogs are not the type of dog you just leave on a chain. They, they're they smart and will, wanting to work for you. You know what I mean? They're not just out there to, or even being a pet is kind of hard on them. 
You know what I mean? They have to be really work really, really hard, you know, or they're a pain in the ass. <laughs> there ain't no doubt. That's where a good chain out comes for them. But, and then after all, the dog can have all those qualities. Can be a smart, hard mouth, rough, game ass, long winded son of a gun. But then he's got to have a good, what we call bloodline, a pedigree behind him. Uh, uh, so you can continue it. Otherwise, you know, it's just a shot in the dark. You, he might never produce anything like himself. That's the same. That's the thing. When you even when you breed them multiple times, they're not the consistency is not there when they're scattered bred too much. You know what I mean? Like this is a uncle niece breeding. All it is is like just like Rusty back to Buster. It's a quarter Buster over. You know, I took Rusty Rita. That's what Dixie is, and then bred back to Rusty. I mean, Buster, yeah, Buster Reed and and, and and Rusty. So it's like, you know, very. It's there's a lot of. It's an Eli Carter Carver dog with a quarter turtle Buster, and we get the same results, the same look, the same every time. But <laughs> that's what I mean. Like just because it, her dogs are this way, even the same bloodlines. Like you can breed a sibling, and you'll get different traits. Now her dogs off of Rusty. If you go by the program we figured out, let them get on up there. I say 24 months old is, is I think, the earliest that I would, would fool mine. My bitch out there is just let me know this is her, uh, that she's ready to start working. They have a lot of, it seems like they got some puppy in them for, until they're later in life. That's what a lot of people have noticed about a lot of that same stuff. And, and if you rush them, you ruin them. I mean, it just, they're not the same quality dog as if when they're mature and um, and then you're going to end up with an animal that you would be, anybody would be proud to own. You know, that's just the truth. They're, they're that quality dog. That's why I like doing this breeding because the first ones, it, we didn't really know them. I was telling people, they were asking me when it, because the dogs were at really good young. And we know we started a couple younger. And um, like 17 months, we, we took them out and got hunting real hard with them. And, and they did, some of them did really good like that. But the ones that come out and that we've waited later in life, they've come out like fully on, done. they look like they've done it their whole life. They have all the, you know what I mean? It's just a totally different animal when they finish out. Plus, it seems like their body doesn't fully grow until they hit that 24, 26 month on these dogs. You know, they go through their, their height stage first. We get some really nice looking animals out of that. We've had some small ones. People always ask about size. I mean, we've had some down into a females down to 28 pounds out of the same stuff. And then we have, as far as I know, the biggest dog we produced yet come off of this. <laughs> but that was Jeff Rowe, you know. He uh he feeds them like he's a bodybuilder or something, man. They eat like better than a human. Um come here, little buddy. But you know, so he, he got it. He didn't miss any meals, but, uh, you know, but the average of them is like that little female out there, you know, their average size female, about 37 pounds male. Um, they can get on up in the fifties down. And then we got a couple in the, in the low forties. And I don't know if there's any in the, I think there's a 39 male. That's about 39, 40 pounds, all big enough to hunt with. I mean, there was one dink, like I said, I don't know what happened to her. She was a midget. But, um, you know, can't have them all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, as far as the quality there, these are, these. this is why we breed dogs as a, a breeder. Is That's the best thing to know. Like with Cherry, I, and what I've done is I set it up. I just said, screw it. If I'm going to raise some litters, might as well have them in the wintertime. Right here where I got the heat on them, walk in the damn in the room, raise one and litter in here, and then another one in the gun room. Just wonder if I got to do one, I might as well do two. And it worked out perfect where I got cherry bread and um, Dixie bread at basically this. I'm wait. I'm thinking cherry's going to have hers tonight. Um, so, you know, if I'm going to be tied down, as long as we'll be, get both of them done. Now, cherry's been producing the hell of a little dog. I mean, this bitch might produce better with other dogs, but I'm the ones that were getting so much off of Rusty and her are so good that, I, you know, when they're finished, they're great. I'm not even trying to fuck it up. You know what I mean? I'll probably continue breeding her back to Rusty. But And, you know, when we breed her sister, because I did her sister too, 
I'm doing her sister back to Rusty. It's a little different dog. These dogs here, they listen good. And I'm telling you, I've had them, I'm telling you, I've seen them both. These listen good. They're real smart. They'll do what you tell them to do. I mean, they're really like Labrador smart dogs, some of them. I mean, don't matter if they're still what people think. Oh, it's a range. It's on a chain. It's terrible. Them motherfuckers are smart. You, you, I spend a lot of time with my dogs. I'm taking them and do. So I can tell you, they are real smart. Them ones off of Angel and Rusty are some bastards. They will not listen to where shit when they want to do something. They're, they're the typical A1 hard-headed, hard-nosed-ass dogs with high-ass athletic abilities, stupid high. Like, when they want to play keep away from you, when they get in that mode, like, don't think you're just going to let him off and he's going to, when he's coming back when he wants to. If you play keep away, you ain't catching him. They're high-ability um, fast little jokers, you know. These are the same way on that, but but they don't put it to use like that. These are seem like they really uh, they're actually a great dog, you know. I can't like we say a perfect dog. The other ones are great dogs the way they work and they're they're solid and all that shit in every form. But these, when you get an intelligent dog, a dog that'll listen is a valuable tool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing about a lot of people ask. It's about bloodlines, you know. I'm a firm believer that it's not the bloodlines. It's where you get the dogs from. If the if the breeder understands these kind of things when he's breeding, you're going to end up, if you talk to him, you know, instead of going in there like you know what you want and all and you talk to him, you'll probably end up with a better dog in the end <laughs> that you like better. It, but that, as, as a breeder, you know, people get – they think they might want something until they don't, until they got it. You know what I mean? I see that a lot. Um, okay, let's just talk about some of the traits. Like, people confuse mouth for roughness. What I mean, like a hard mouth dog and a rough dog together is really great. But a, a sometimes you'll get a real hard, everyone talks about hard mouth strains and all that. Want to know about breeding for mouth. If you breed a family of dogs together, that is usually biting very good. And when I mean biting good, where the kind of dogs are, where you don't want to really catch some little pit, you want to let them little ones go. I mean, unless you're just decimating the area. If you're sport hunting, don't catch no little pigs with a hard mouth dog. But um, unless you want to eat him. But uh, <laughs> you know, because a lot of times nowadays, you know, it's it's gotten where the the population is went through some, regardless, in our area, rather, you have certain pockets that are full of hogs. Usually those pockets are deer leases where they're dumping a bunch of corn and the hogs are going in there to get on that deer corn and they won't let people catch them. So they get con a big population. And then people go in there, oh, God, we're full of hogs. We've got to get them out of here. You get lucky up and hunt like that. But for the most part, the areas that are able to be hunted, the it's, it's pretty hard. It's There's a good number of hogs, but them boys are having to work for them. You know what I mean? They're having to work for them. And um, so they don't always just try to decimate them. You know what I mean? Hell, they, they there's other ways to kill them little ones like that instead of getting their adrenaline all up. If you want to eat them. But uh, anyhow, that hard mouth is like pressure. Okay? It ain't just, the, it ain't how they're shaking or none of that. You might have a rough dog that, doesn't really have a lot of mouth and he looks like he's doing so much better on the hog than he really is you know what i mean where, where a lot of times some of these bloodlines people say i want a hard mouth dog i'm like okay now these dogs might have really hard mouth and, but the other traits are they rough too are they fast can they move you know do they have any other thing but a, all gas no brakes you know what i mean a lot of dogs that that are those those type of dogs that's the way they are. So you have to fig, you know, figure out, okay, well, this is a good dog. These are the traits he has. I want to add them to something that can move real good and real agile, real fast, you know, has good endurance, you know, things like of that nature. That's how you're going to make your better. It's, and if you get on stuck on one family and one bloodline and all that, if those dogs produce those traits, like just, okay, like, like, for instance, Turtle Buster. 
the turtle buster dogs have been hard mouth, straightforward game dogs. They're gamey. They're going to stay on that hog. They're going to go back in there on that and, and catch the same spot every time, try to. And they'll get it in their head that that's the spot that they want, even when that's a dangerous way to get there. You know what I mean? And so you have to understand that you might want that blood, but understand that's a lot of the time, that's the, some of the traits that they have, you know, and it's strong. That that blood is very strong and it, and it, um, it passes those traits. You'll get, you'll get some really, they might not all catch it, but occasionally you'll get some really hard biting rough dogs, but you have to cross it into something to make the total package is what I'm saying. Like to make a dog that's really, really good. Like, Oh shit. Some bitch can really bite. He's rough. He's got high endurance. He can move. He can get out of trouble. He's intelligent. And he's, and there's another trait that a lot of people overlook is what it's known in the breeders as finish. You want a dog that, okay, if you got to, you want to subdue that hog. And if he's, you know, you got him where he's breathing. He's not, he's not working hard. You want that dog to go in there and really punish him to stop him where you can get in there and leg him. You don't want him to have any more fight in it. You want to go ahead and stop his ass, you know, and you want a dog that'll do that. You don't want one that's just going to hang on the ear and just look around when the hog stops moving around. You, you want him to go on and keep on fighting that somebody until you wear his ass out. I'm telling you, there's a beast that you're, you're, you're going primeval hunting on, you know what I mean? And uh, that's the type of dog you got to have. A lot of times, <clears throat> just a hard mouth, rough dog, I don't care how game they are, it doesn't do them a lot of good on an animal that's five times as big and their teeth barely punch her to hide. You know what I'm saying? They're just, you got to have the whole package. And that's what, uh, what to me, what the total package is a dog that possesses all them traits. And he's off of a, family of dogs, a, a, a lineage of dogs that's traceable that have produced those qualities that you're looking for, you know what I mean, consistently. That's the kind of dogs you want to have, and that's the kind of dogs you want to breed. And uh, that's how we've been doing it. It's been working out good, a lot of, lot of good dogs. I mean, there's been a – I told myself when I was going to start, it's hard not to get kennel blind – when you get something going good and it's working good, but trust me, always strive to make it better and, and you'll, you'll keep succeeding in your, in your breeding program. And uh, sometimes you have to, like I tell you guys, sometimes you have to go out, go out and catch a butterfly here and there, you know, just like that dog I bred to Cherry. It was a, I could have went down to Florida and bred a dog that even had a little dynamite and it was basically the same thing. And he was also a very high quality dog and he already had a little bit like a quarter dynamite in him. But I wanted to, you know, I like the little dog up here. He had, he had some good traits that I don't know about the other one. Like I know for a fact this dog's very quiet and he's chill and he's easy to handle, but he's a good dog and he's bred well from a good family that produces good dogs. So that was really the one of the traits that I looked in this dog that I really liked. And then I had a couple of his offspring here a few, <laughs> for a few days, and, and they, they don't have the damn traits. So I'm hoping that he, um, they had the traits, the good traits, but they they caught the damn, the loud trait, I guess, from the mama side, when the mama was kind of bred like Terry too. So from my understanding, I mean, I'm not positive, but I think it was a lot of that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, so I'll probably get a bunch of loud motherfuckers out of it. You know how that goes. But I'm trying. I'm trying to quieten them down. But anyway, that's the program. That's how we do it. And, and that's what we look for in the dogs. And uh, I'm not really, I don't have any favorite bloodline, but I have bloodlines that I know that I can use together and I can get what I'm after. You know, that's how I do it. And certain dogs of those bloodlines, I'm, I've already figured out certain dogs, even the blood's the same then puppies going to be a little different. They're going to have different different qualities because the individual dogs, that's the thing. They they produce themselves, you know. And um, be honest with you, Dixie's a very, very obedient, good dog. Angel ain't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's kind of a bitch when she wants to do something. So it's, she's past that. But uh, anyhow, y'all take care. Y'all stay safe.
and I'll have another long night. Like I tell them, I'm always tired. I'm always tired. It keeps me from thinking too much. But anyway, folks, y'all take care and keep on bulldogging.